Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Now moving on, the United Nations Security Council has adopted a draft resolution renewing the mandate of the UN Assistance Mission in Somalia, that's UNSUM, for, the, for one year until October 2024. The draft resolution in blue retains UNSUM's core mandated tasks and role as set out in Resolution 2158 of 29 May 2014 and Resolution 2592 of 30 August 2021. Now, it requests UNSUM to continue to maintain and strengthen its core presence across Somalia. It also allows UNSUM to work closely with the Somali government, uh, the AU, and the UN Support Office in Somalia to address collectively the practical implications of ATMIS's drawn or drawdown, including the regard to the safety and security of UNSUM personnel and to prepare for continued cooperation following ATMIS's withdrawal. This is the 10th year since the establishment of the Special Political Mission in Somalia. We firmly believe that the mission's mandate should reflect the Somalia of today rather than Somalia of 2013. In that regard, we welcome the Council's initiation of the transition into a United Nations country team presence in order to align with the government's articulated long-term development priorities. Furthermore, the fight against terrorism is not only won through military means, but also it's important to simultaneously address the drivers of violent extremism, such as lack of economic opportunities. As you are aware, there is no peace without development and no development without peace. All right, joining us on the news is Wale Ojewale, expert in conflicts, organized crime and security governance, to shed more light on this. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us, Wale. Thank you so much for having me. All right, so can you briefly tell us what the key core tasks and roles outlined in the renewed mandate is? And also, how is this mandate expected uh, to impact the overall situation in Somalia, particularly in terms of security and governance? Yes, this is coming in the wake of a global, or let me say continental or regional core, particularly with um, among observers of our security development in Africa, the general public in some of the regions in Africa, who feel that um, some of these uh, peacekeeping missions have actually outlived their usefulness. As we have seen, the withdrawal in Mali, the withdrawal in Niger, in, in, um, Niger and also the clamor for the withdrawal of the MONUSCO in Congo. So I think what is happening in Somalia is uh, welcome in the sense that um, Withdrawal of a um, peacekeeping mission cannot be done through a Nick Jack approach. It has to be systematically approached and it has to be strategic. Um, a, um, sudden withdrawal is definitely going to translate to a vacuum that will be created and that can be for, um, further exploited by the harm group as we are seeing in the Sahel now. So I think the development and the interest in working with the Somali government I mean, it's uh, welcome in the sense that you look at uh, the recent gains that have been made in terms of um, decimating the violent extremist team group in the country. Um, this is going to be solidified by this extension of the one year, and it will give the country ample opportunity to be able to put the necessary framework in place that is going to serve as a potent replacement for the UN mission when it is probably um, eventually withdrawn in the uh, after one year. So I think it's a welcome development and it's going to help the security architecture of the country. All right. Now, talking about the withdrawal of UN forces in Mali and, uh, you know, uh, the renewed, uh, sorry, the, uh, the likely withdrawal in Congo, uh, we're seeing that on one hand. And we're also seeing, you know, this renewed mandate in Somalia. Now, if you can tell us what challenges and opportunities is UN some likely to face in maintaining and also strengthening its presence across Somalia over the next year? The number one thing is that uh, the case of uh, comparative uh, experience in the Congo and Somalia is a bit different. In Congo, there is a widespread call for the withdrawal of the UN mission. 
which is um, about two years, I mean, 20, 20 years now, that's about two decades. And the general sentiment among the public is that it has probably outlived its usefulness and not really delivering in um, helping to solidify the security architecture of the country, particularly with the renewed war by um, different harm groups against the states now. And the second thing is that in the Republic of Congo, we, I mean, they are in the election season now. And I think the government is trying to, at CCKD government is trying to pander to public sentiment mm -hmm. by supporting the sudden withdrawal of the UN mission in the country. The contrary is the case in Somalia because um, there is um, some form of arrangement that uh, binds the country to the UN operation in the country. And I think to a large extent, the renewal of the one year actually signifies that the government still wants to partner with the UN mission. And like I said earlier, that will give them ample opportunity to put necessary framework in place that is going to fill the vacuum that is going to be created when the UN mission leaves in one year. So the dynamics is that in one country, the government is still ready to partner with the UN mission, while in the other country, the people and the government, probably because of political sentiment now, and the overall factor of the fact that uh, the mission, as based on the assessment of the people, has at least its youthfulness, I mean, usefulness the people want to pull i mean push out the un mission in the country but um the overall potential consequence for this is already staring us in the face because the government has not demonstrated the capability to actually rein in the different armed groups about 130 of them who are actually challenging the state monopoly of violence in the country all right, uh, uh, Wale, you did talk about, you know, the international dynamics that could influence uh, their work. But then how will the collaboration between, uh, you know, stakeholders, or when I say stakeholders, I mean the UN, some, the Somali government, the African Union, and also UN SOS, you know, address the practical implications of admissions drawdown and also enhance the safety and security of UN SOMS personnel? Well, the number one thing is that as much as a country would like to rely on international development partners, the important thing is that the responsibility of securing the country lies with the government and with the people. So the stopgap that is going to be filled by the UN mission or maybe African Union or any other development partner is not going to be forever. So what is important is that a window of opportunity is now open to the country to make concerted efforts to um, address critical issues of security re sector reform, strengthening the military, capacitating the police, and then drawing down on the trust that the people probably have in the states, particularly in the light of the recent case that, and traction that the country has made in the recent time, to now consolidate on that, to develop a robust security architecture. I mean security and defense architecture, working with the people, working with the six state security services and defense forces to be able to now feed that vacuum that's going to be created when the UN mission is eventually withdrawn. African uh, AMISOM or maybe African Union or any other regional agency um, at best can only provide short-term measure, short-term support um, as far as security and defense is concerned in the country. The overall responsibility of securing the lives and property of the people against terrorist threats lies with the government. And I think that should be the focus of the government within the next one year that this mandate has now been renewed. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Wale, for joining us at this time to speak on this particular topic. We appreciate you for your time. Thank you so much for having me.